So welcome everyone. So for those of you who are looking to see what's coming up this term, we have got our term starting on January 2nd. And here is the list of all the classes that we'll be offering. I guess I should have backed up and introduced myself. My name is Donna Young and I am the president of Kepler College. And I'm also one of the faculty members of the Fundamentals One class. So that's the first class in the Certificate and Diploma Program. With me today is Enid Newberg, and she is one of the faculty members for the next level, the W102 Fundamentals to Interpretation Schools, and Karen McCauley, who is on the faculty for Fundamentals 3, Building Delineation Skills. So those three courses are what really comprise the, the bones of the certificate, the fundamental certificate, what you need to really get yourself going if you want to take the diploma, and even just in terms of understanding natal astrology really well. But you can see here uh, a list of many of the other classes that we're offering. Some of these uh, will require a bit of the fundamentals before you can take them. But many of them you can take even if you're not interested in a certificate or a diploma. If you just want to take a class and you wanted to take consulting skills or the sun sign columnist, uh, many of these classes, uh, astrological knowledge isn't really necessary. I mean, obviously, you'd want astrological knowledge to be a sun sign columnist, but uh, there's not necessarily any prerequisites connected to them. So if you go to our website, you'll be able to see which classes need to have advanced knowledge for and which ones that you could just take on their own. But certainly let us know if you're interested in any of those and have questions. You've already heard me talk about the certificate program <laughs> and the diploma program. Um, so here's the bones of our diploma program. There's a fundamental certificate. So you have to have the three classes that I just mentioned that myself and Enid and Karen um, are co-teachers on, as well as some classes in movement forecasting, chart mechanics. Enid also teaches that one. That's a chart calculation class that is a requirement for the diploma, but we promise is as less painful as we can make it. <laughs> you have to have some history, some astronomy, counseling issues, uh, electives. So those are just classes that you can just pick and choose from. And then at the end, you're required to do a demonstration of learning, which would be in the form of, uh, it could be a written something that you wanna submit for publication, it could be a webinar that you're doing with us. It's something that you work with the director of education with in terms of coming up with a final project. And then we have an advanced diploma, which includes everything that you saw in the uh, previous screen, which was like 130 weeks of learning. This one, the advanced one adds on to that and you take some additional classes that really round out your education. When you're done with your um, diploma, your, this early diploma, you really have everything that you need uh, to be able to challenge some of the exams, the organizational exams, and you know, to really have a good understanding of astrology that you might start to um, build your practice. But we also have some professional development classes that you might be interested in taking that can help you to really start your business. And again, those are regardless of whether you, whether you uh, are working towards a certificate or a diploma with us or not. Um, here are the organizations that we have connections with. So we're excited about the recent AFA affiliation that we have, and that is a direct relationship. If you have a diploma with Kepler College, you can have an advanced membership or a professional partnership with the advanced diploma with the AFA, the American Federation of Astrologers. That was a recent announcement we're pretty excited about. But the other diplomas the, uh, that you can gain with Kepler College allow you some advantage with the other organizations as well. So with NCGR, the Professional Astrologers Alliance, you basically can jump right in and take the level four professional exam 
So, you know, big advantage there. You don't have to take those earlier exams. And with CAP ESAR, for those of you familiar with that organization, they don't necessarily have levels in the same way, but you certainly have all of the tools that you need to enable you to write the certification exam. If you're not sure where you might land in all of this, on our website, we have got a free quiz that you can take. And it doesn't mean that you can't go on to take any of the classes if you don't pass the quiz. It's really just to give you an idea of where you might have gaps in your knowledge. So uh, it, within that quiz, we have some suggestions. If you fall within this range or that range, then you might want it to start at the first level or the second level. But it, it'll give you some indications of the material that we teach uh, in our program and where you might stand and all of that. So that is completely free. Go ahead and go to our website and jump into that quiz if that has any interest to you at all. And we will, you will find uh, if there are some more advanced classes that you want to take that we might recommend this quiz as well, just to make sure that you uh, have the required knowledge that you need. If you find that you already have a good background in astrology and you just wanted to test out of some of our exams, you're welcome to do that as well. So we allow the first two levels of the fundamental certificate, that's W101 and W102 that you've heard me talk about already. You can challenge those exams as well as the first level of the predictive uh, track that's W110, predicting major life circumstances and chart calculation. So if you have some experience for a $50 fee, you can challenge these exams. And if you, if you do pass those tests the, and you decide that um, you just wanna go on, you can do that. And if you look at the exam and you feel completely overwhelmed by it. You paid your $50 and you decide, no, I'm not going to be able to pass the exam. I just want to take the class. Then that $50 will be applied to um, your fee or the class that you want to take. So you just need to let our registrar know about that. We've got... I just wanted to give you a little list here of some upcoming classes or some workshops that we have on an ongoing basis. We've got workshops and webinars that we, that we are working on. So if any of these have any interest to you, these are also available on our website, as well as I'm sure many of you are aware, regular webinars that we have free monthly webinars that are always well attended. And you can sign up for those, these upcoming ones as well right now. Based on feedback that we got during our last open house, this is a new thing that we're going to be offering to the community uh, as a free service. And this is just a chart practice. And this is based just on the fundamentals um, so the first class, the W101 that you've heard me refer to is uh, earlier, we won't be practicing any techniques beyond the basics. So that's you know really just planets, signs, houses, aspects, chart patterns, some basic things like that. There won't be any deep dive. For the students in the program, there is uh, another chart practice that happens on Sunday night that, that Karen, uh, who is with us today, is primary lead on um, as, well, as well as her co-teacher Inga Thornell. But this one is, uh, is for people outside of the student body. So any of you who are here today are certainly welcome to attend this. There will be no teaching. It's really just for the collective groups to come in and do some chart practice. And we've had a big response to this. So it, we, we've got listed here that it's myself and Vanessa and Callum who will be leading this, but in reality, I think there will end up being a number of people who will be hosting those sessions. And we certainly look forward to seeing some of you in those sessions every Tuesday between five and six Pacific, starting mid-January. 
of course, our YouTube channel. This is where you're going to find any of the videos that we have done, the free webinars that we do will show up there, as well as other, other um, interviews and some past recordings that we have done through the years that you know are now on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and follow us there. And additionally, we are excited to have this Toastmasters group. Uh, initially, we had offered a public speaking class for our students. And we decided that this Toastmasters, affiliating with Toastmasters, or we're not affiliating, we just started a club, uh, would be a better route to go because we could open that up to the community at large. So we meet every Wednesday between 11.30 and 12.30 Pacific. And I wasn't familiar with Toastmasters before, but I certainly am now. And one of the things that I didn't realize that it's not just about public speaking skills, but it helps you to improve your presentation skills all around. So there's leadership skills and there's all kinds of different little pathways that you can take if you have to facilitate groups or meetings or any of those things. It's not just about standing up in front of a crowd and giving a big talk. But if that is your goal, certainly that is helpful as well. So if you are interested in joining that group um, or coming as a guest, anyone is welcome to attend as a guest. You can just email toastmasters at keplercollege.org and we will send you an invitation uh, to the Zoom meeting that we have on that. And now I am just going to open the floor up to any questions that people might have. I know we've got a few in the Q&A that I'm going to tackle first. As so somebody has asked, is there a specific computer software required for this course? Um, I'm, Melanie, maybe you can let us know which course, if you're referring to a specific course, because some of them do have uh, particular software, but for the most part, that is not the case. For the most part, you could navigate your way through by using astro.com and the fundamental certificate for sure. You don't need to buy any software. You can use any of the free software that's available out there. Uh, in some of the more advanced classes, you will need to have some software, but we don't ask for a particular type. And Kimberly is asking, if I start in the certificate program, will the classes count if I go into a degree program later? Kepler College used to offer, offer a, a degree program, used to have a degree program that was many years ago, and we no longer have um, degrees offered. So that the switch is to diplomas. And for sure, if you're starting in a certificate program, your classes will count towards your diploma. You don't have to commit to the diploma up front. You, you can um, just start taking classes. And we often have people who think they're only going to do this certificate, and then they decide that they want to go forward with the full diploma. So by all means, you know, you can just build your way towards that. Um, let me just see other questions here. Do you have to attend live classes? You do not have to attend live classes for, for most of the classes that we have. So for example, in um, the early classes, W101 and W102, there is no requirement that you need to attend live. Some of the classes are practicums and, and, or they have a practicum component in them. And so then there is a requirement that uh, there is some attendance. But Karen, do you want to speak to that and how you, in terms of how you manage that for people who are in another time zone or, or something like that? Yeah, for the, uh, we have two sessions that are requiring their live attendance. And for people who can't come to the weekend meetings, we also have two meetings, one in the morning and one in the evening during the week and they can do the live exchange there. So we try to adapt the availability to their schedules, but there's only two. In 104, however, 
it becomes, I think, more important um, that there's more live interaction, not for every class, but for some of the activities. Yeah, you'd have to be able to attend at least some of them because there's a component where you're doing a live reading. That's right, and, and all of our classes are recorded. So, so anybody who misses a class or can't come to the regular classes has access to those recordings and, and will listen to, are expected to listen to those and mm -hmm. view those. Yeah, yeah, that's the beauty actually. All of our, our classrooms, if you will, they're virtual classrooms, they're done through a, a Moodle platform it's called. And within that platform, we of course have all of the material that you need for the upcoming week, your assignments, et cetera. But there is a place where we store all of the recordings. So if you miss for whatever reason, you are able to go back and listen to those. And those classes remain open actually for a few years. So you can, can continue to go back and review the material if you forget something <laughs> and you just want to do some review. I did want to add one thing, though, I, relative to the question of time for classes outside of class. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about the regular classes that lead up to the diploma, the average is six to eight hours of work outside of class. It's true. Um, because we're serious. There's, there's reading, there's activities, et cetera. I wanted them to know that. Yeah, there is some rigor to all of our classes. And that's and, something that's an important thing to know up front for sure. And for see, people who don't want to do any work, workshops, webinars, no work required in those. Yeah. Although you, if you find that you are interested in the course material and you don't want to do the assignments, you just want to do the learning, you are welcome to attend. You, you can still sign up for the class and just let us know that you're auditing the class. And yes, there's no problem. You can take whatever classes that you want in that regard without the expectation of doing homework. You, you, know, you still have to pay for the class, but, but just let us know and we won't harass you for your home. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, you'll still be able to participate. You'll still have the class site for the next two, well, three years at least, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and for, you know, there was also about that question of if you're taking classes and you decide that you want to actually do the diploma program, we do record whether you've passed a class or not. So if we have a recording that you've, you know, that if we've recorded that you have passed the class, we can see exactly where you're at. You can contact the registrar and say, you know, I've taken these sorts of things. Now, how do I get the rest? Exactly. Yeah, we keep a record of everything. So as long as you've done your homework, you can move. Here's a good question. I'm completely new to Kepler College. Where do I start? So a part of that depends on whether you're completely new to astrology. The best place to go is to that quiz that I showed earlier. I'm going to go back to that slide right here. If you, um, and I don't know, Enid, can you uh, possibly pop the link to the quiz in the chat so that everyone can, sure. can uh, go directly there if they want to look at that quiz? This quiz is really the place where you will be able to see, you know, what level that you're at. So if you're completely new to astrology, that's a little bit easier. If you don't know your glyphs or anything like that, we do have a beginner workshop that you can sign into and you know study the glyphs. But really, as long as you have a fundamental understanding of, of the glyphs and of the planets and the signs and an understanding, basic understanding of, of the chart in that way, you can go into W101, the fundamentals class. And I see my co-teacher, uh, Vanessa Lundberg, is here now. Um, let me just see if I've made her a co-host so she can share her screen. Oh, yeah. If you want to say hi, Vanessa. And that's really the place to start. But if you have some background, by all means, you know, these quizzes are going to tell you whether you can challenge some of the exams or uh, whether you whether you need to back up a bit and take some of the classes. 
is there a time limit for completion of a certificate and diploma program? Uh, not really. We, we let you take that at your own pace. So you're, you're welcome. I mean, we have some people who've been chipping away at them for years. Typically, when you start the program, if you take one class per term, it'll take you about four years to complete the, um, the basic diploma. The certificates you can complete. Usually a certificate is, is 30. Uh, you, most of them are 30 weeks. There's the occasional one that's 40 weeks. And you can finish those in a year. So, but there is, but there is no time limit. Although, you know, if you wait years and years, you're probably going to need a bit of a refresher, but, <laughs> but we, don't, we, we don't limit that out. What is the average class size, especially for the fundamentals courses? So in the early days, we do have bigger class sizes. And by bigger, I mean, we're talking about, you know, perhaps 25 other students in your class. And that's really the cap on just about all of our classes. We might have some that go as, as much to 30 uh, uh, attendees, but more often when you get into the more advanced classes, as you move along, of course the numbers drop because not everybody finds that the rigor is uh, working for what's going on in their life. And some people really only wanna take the first class, you know, as you can imagine, like everywhere, the first level has a lot more then the next level has, you start to see people drop out. And so the numbers aren't as high. Enid, what do you normally see in the second level in, in 102? In 102, uh, like, um, 15 to 20. Yeah. And then in 103, uh, what do you normally see? Karen? Six to 10. Yeah. So the class sizes, and then I think after that, the, the, that, that six to 10 number is what you're going to see more often for some of the more advanced classes. So the people that have gone that far are dedicated to the diploma, and you'll see that number of students pretty much in the rest of the classes after that. But it also varies with some of the electives because a lot of people do take classes who aren't interested in the diploma, so they're in Yeah, class. that's right, that's yeah. right. And especially when you get into some of the more professional development classes, there's a lot of people that will come in um, that aren't working on their diploma that'll join in. So you, you're gonna see those numbers go up and down depending on the class and the interest that is there in the community. But if you're traveling with your little cohort, if you're taking the classes, you know, that are with the people that you started with in the W101, then that's kind of the average size for the classes that are required for the diploma as a rule, but it goes up and down. We do, we really do not have classes that go over 30 students because of the amount of homework and the teachers are all marking that homework. Um, if, you know, you can imagine that we wouldn't want these massive 100 student class sizes. If we had a whole bunch of people signing up, we would just open up another classroom and, and uh, have a different group of people. So you wouldn't have to sift your way through 100 people trying to communicate within the, within the class. We do this in large part because we, it's not just, you know, for the teachers having lots of work, but it's for you as a student you're gonna learn a whole lot more when you get more personalized attention. And that's our goal is to, you know, our classes are intensive because it helps you shortcut the number of years it takes to absorb the amazing amount of information you can about how astrology works. Exactly. So we want you yeah. to be successful in that. So we keep our classes smaller so we can do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Will the classes be at a consistent time every week? Would I be able to make up class with the other morning, evening, and weekend sessions? The, the classes are, are all at the same time every week. So for the classes that are up for the winter term, you will be able to see the time and the date and the time that those classes will be offered. However, uh, there are some times in the fundamental certificate, not necessarily for the other classes, but in, in W101, W102, and W103, there are usually some outside practice labs that happen outside of that regular time. So 
in, for example, in W101 with Vanessa and I, uh, we do have the classes every Sunday at, at this term, it'll be at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, but four times out of the term, we will have a live lab that will be on Wednesday. And we have a few sessions during the day, or, I'm sorry, on Mondays um, for people to practice their skills or ask any questions if they weren't able to make the live. So I read on your website that a diploma program takes about three to four years, taking one class per session. What is the rough cost of a degree? Again, it, we have, with, the, with the just the vocabulary here, we don't offer degrees. We're not a degree granting institution, but with the diploma, if you're looking at the fundamentals diploma, uh, I haven't worked that out lately, but it's under 2000 no, not $2,000. That's bad math. That's for a certificate. <laughs> um, times. We've got 130 weeks. You'd be looking at about $7,600. It'll be less than that because some of the classes are a little bit less, but that would be the cost of a four-year program. But that's not including the books and not the materials. The books. That's right. So, yeah, usually we used to tell them it was between 7,600 and 8,500, depending on what courses they took. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And whether you take advantage of the discounts to come as a student. <laughs> right. That's right, because we have early bird pricing every term, and the price that I gave you is based on full price. <laughs> right. So you certainly have the advantage or the opportunity to pay less if you take advantage, if you sign up early and get those early bird prices. If you test out of a class, do you need to make up credit hours for a degree or a certificate program? Uh, no, you don't, because if you test out of the classes, it's assumed that you've already done those hours. So we're, you're okay to finish up. Um, if you found those hours somewhere. If you learn chart calculations someplace else, you, you've committed those hours. The certificate program is three classes. How many classes for the diploma? So it is 130 hours of classes. And because we have it in the certificate program, in the, um, in the fundamental certificate program, you are taking three 10 week classes. But many of our classes are five week classes as you move into the program and especially the electives, just about all of the electives are five week classes. So we can't say per class how many you need. But, but it, it's 130 weeks, not hours. Donna. 103 weeks. Yes, of course. Sorry. Um, 130 <laughs> weeks of classes. And that's divided between five and 10 week classes. Thank you for catching that. Um, how many hours per week do you think a person would have to devote to study to be successful? We think about eight to 10 hours, including the class time. Now that varies from person to person. Some people, if you're a really fast reader and you retain information really well, you, uh, you know, you can do it in less time. And then other people who are very thorough and meticulous spend a lot more time. So on average, we, we think about eight to 10 hours, but it'll depend on who you are, of course, and your learning style. What is the bridge class? You wanna talk about that, Enid? Sure. The bridge class is where you've learned all your basics in astrology, but you still find yourself going, how the heck do I put it all together and actually get an interpretation out of it that makes sense? So it, if you have the bridge class and you, and you pass, there's a test in that, you can actually go into 102 without taking 101 because it's basically doing the synthesis part of 101 in the bridge course. But I have a lot of students that are there just to get a chance to sort of re-grapple with the basics and how then you can use that to to make it a whole lot easier <laughs> to synthesize your your interpretation, to come up with something that's meaningful, not one of the 
I'm sure many of you have encountered the astrological statements where when you suddenly, you know, it sounds great, and you pause to think about it, and you realize, oh, this was, you know, for one twelfth of the world's population, and it was totally general, and maybe there's something more. And the bridge course is how you can really get to that something more. So when you read, you can make the the uh, chart speak to the person in front of you. And the bridge class is a workshop, just yeah. to be clear. It's it's not a credit class, but if you take the bridge class, you know, if you have some background in astrology and you just want to fill in some gaps, and you think you, you don't need to take a W101, or if you've done the quiz and you can and you've tested to that level, you just can go into the bridge class, then you can challenge the 101 exam and go into 102 without having taken yeah. 101. Yeah, there, there's homework in the course, but the homework is let's do some interpretation and, and shared interpretation. So it's not, you know, you'll get some, some personalized feedback, but you also have your fellow classmates to bounce off of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The Toastmaster group is via Zoom. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. It, I didn't realize this when we started the group because Kepler College has been teaching online for a couple of decades, really. <laughs> they were way before its time. Um, and I didn't realize that, that Toastmasters didn't have a model for um, online uh, groups until the pandemic when they you know, did kind of this integrated thing. So, but our group is intended to be online and, and is entirely online. And we have people from all over the world, some that get up at ridiculous hours of the morning to join us. So it is, it is we put it at a time that we hoped, you know, would, would be able to reach a, a broad spectrum of time zones. But of course, um, it doesn't work for everyone. And somebody had asked that question, will there be a Toastmasters group that meets in the evenings that we, you know, we might do that. I think if that is something that you're interested in, uh, certainly to the email that we had put in there, where was that there? Toastmasters at keplercollege.org, send us an email. And if we start to see that we have a lot of interest in a group that meets later in the day, you know, I, we certainly could start another group that, that satisfies that need. It is nice to be in a group with people that speak the language for sure. Here's a great question, and maybe we all want to chime in on this a little bit. There are so many people online and on YouTube offering astrology courses and certificate programs. In your opinion, what makes Kepler stand out? So, Omari Martin, the chair of our board, is here. Omari, do you want to start with the answer to that question? Uh, yes, Donna, I do. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome, and I thank you for attending our open house. And in response to the question, I would say that here at Kepler College, we provide you with structure a structure for your learning in that you start off with 101 and then there's 102 and then there's 103 and then there's uh, 104. And those classes build upon one another. And as a student, you have an opportunity to carry forward the knowledge uh, that you are acquiring as a student of Kepler College. And then um, my colleague Enid just mentioned a few moments ago about in one of the, you know, in the classes, you have an opportunity to apply what you learn through demonstrating that and comparing notes with your uh, peers in the class to see how they also may interpret the same aspect or planetary alignment. And then here at Kepler College, yes, there is the rigor, <laughs> the rigor that's certainly built into our certificate programs and diploma programs um, for your benefit so that you have an experience that is uh, substantive. And upon the completion of each class, you can mark that as a milestone, if you will, and, and really celebrate that and have the feeling that you actually earned something. Whereas with other uh, astrology schools, 
that experience may not be the same. And I also want to add this. This is Kepler College, and we also present our students with different schools of thought, particularly about house systems, the unending conversation that we have amongst ourselves. <laughs> and so there is no, um, and I think I've heard Enid or Karen say this previously, here at Kepler College, we don't have that, that guru approach where Omari Martin is the teacher and the one, this is my way and my style, and then I have all these followers or acolytes. We, we don't do that here at Kepler College. And I think um, all of the instructors across the board take pride in that, in that once again, the different schools of thought are presented to our students. And yes, some students will gravitate towards or have affinity for one school of thought or another. But again, here at Kepler College, you get a broad-based broad exposure to astrology uh, as a system. So that may have been a long-winded answer. And um, Donna, I yield. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Omari. By the way, Omari is one of the faculty members for the first class, the W110, which is the first class in our predictive certificate and a required class in our diploma. Um, Vanessa, Karen, or Enid, do you have anything to add to what Omari has said? Uh, I'll add something. Uh, just to continue that train of thought, um, there are so many amazing instructors and there isn't one point of view and there's cumulatively, what, centuries of experience here? <laughs> teaching um, anybody who wants to come and join the program. And uh, the other advantage is that once you get into the certificates, you're being taught by someone who's a specialist in that area. And so we may not, you know, we're all astrologers, but we're not all specialists in every single kind of astrology. But you can specialize here if you choose to and, you know, learn from the best. Great, yeah. Karen? I think one of the things that's different about Kepler that we've carried over from when it was a degree granting school is that we've maintained the breadth and depth of presentations as well as emphasize critical thinking skills and the ethics that are involved in astrology. So those are a couple of things that I wanted to add. Mm, for sure. I need it. I, I might as well throw my two bits in. Yeah. Um, the other part of it is we ground the astrology. So you discover how how does it relate to, to the culture it was growing up in? So here's some of these techniques that were used by the ancient Greeks. So what was really going on? And, you know, and does that still apply? Does it still work? Or some of the modern stuff that we've done, is it because we really had no clue? <laughs> or is it because we, you know, we'd come up with something that's that's got some substance to it? And it's a chance, the chance to mix with all of that and feel really whatever style of astrology you do, like like Omari said, we're not gonna tell you which style of astrology you practice, but we're gonna expose you to these different ideas that when you do choose you know why and you actually have a broader grasp of what it is and you can really claim it as something with pride i think a lot of times i run across astrologers and i experienced it myself where well do you say you're an astrologer when you're in this group of people yeah <laughs> you know, it's it's <laughs> and lee layman at one point gave a speech where he was an making the analogy in some ways there is a there's a kinship to how people who were gay be you know even well it's even happening now but particularly when i was growing where you didn't say that you know here you only said it over here and and why astrology has been around in culture forever and knowing that history that never gets taught <laughs> in school <laughs> usually yeah. is incredibly empowering for sure. Yeah, I think especially if you're looking at the diploma program, you can see it, you know, Enid's talking about the history, the things that we think are important in terms of a well-rounded education are included in, in this diploma. And the other thing that I would add personally to this question is 
certainly, you know, there's an amazing amount of offerings online right now. But of course, the difference between just learning something from watching videos and actually having that instructor mark your assignments, like personally mark your assignment, it's not fielded out to somebody else. Your assignments are being evaluated by the instructors of the class. And so I think that's an important thing if you're, if you're just getting, you know, online snippets. And I, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of great astrology out there right now. I'm really excited about the future of astrology in one regard, but there's also a lot of really bad astrology out there, especially on some of the social media platforms. So I think that you can be, you can be confident with Kepler College that the faculty members that are there have, have been uh, working for a long time in the field, uh, have you know, a solid education. And collectively, like Vanessa was saying, bring a great amount of knowledge. Uh, and it doesn't mean that we all agree. It doesn't mean that if I was to sit in on Omari's class or Karen's class, that everything they, that they say, I'm going to agree with because I have my own you know, school of thought, but there's a respect for other people's thought. There's a place for all of it. And this is the place where you find your own voice. I think that's an important part of it. We are encouraging you, you know, as an instructor, my proudest moment is when somebody challenges me <laughs> because it means that you have been able to, to find your own voice. Yeah, and I think it's important to remember that what we do in these classes that are methodologies basically is to demonstrate. We demonstrate the different techniques that are available. We're not trying to impose our method on the students. And indeed, many of the classes are set up in such a way that a lot of the learning takes place in the student discussions with each other. That's and they right. learn a lot from each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another question here, are there astrology degree programs not in, uh, in the United States, there are not any. In uh, the University of Wales has a degree in cultural, uh, what's it called? I've forgotten the name. Is it cultural cosmology and astrology? Right. Something like that. Yeah, so you can get your, you can get an MA there. Um, I don't know if any other degree programs in astrology do you, do any of you here? Well, in India for, for, yeah. Of course, yeah. For Hindu astrology or Indian astrology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, yeah, if you, if you work towards your Kepler diploma, you certainly have a really good background if you decide, or you, decide you want to go on to the University of Wales and work on that degree program to get an MA. They don't have a BA, but you could get an MA. But anybody that's graduated through Kepler would have a really good foundation to moving uh, into that book program if a degree is important to you. Are there discounts available for military veterans? There are indeed. And you could reach out to our registrar. I'm just going to type the address in the chat bar. to find out more about that. Registrar at keplercollege.org. And you can also reach out to the registrar with any questions about the program. If you have any questions after today, speed them her way. She might not answer them for you. She might forward them to us, but that would be the best funnel. Are the instructors available after hours to answer homework questions? Um, if the question is live, that, you know, that, can sometimes be arranged, but certainly the instructors do respond really well. There's a message system within the Moodle platform that you can ask any questions to the instructors. Although for the most part, we encourage that uh, home, um, questions related to assignments and whatnot to be included in the discussion forum. There's a general discussion forum because if you have questions, you're probably not the only one. So we prefer to use that platform but certainly you do have the ability to communicate with your instructors. And, and if we're not immediately seeing the message, we do try and make sure that we get to it within a day. 
-hmm. Yes. Um, At the outside. <laughs> yeah. So as a uh, co-teacher with uh, Carol Tebbs, I do invite students if they need to, to um, schedule an office hour with me uh, via Zoom. And I will, you know, meet with the student if they uh, make that request. And, and this only applies to myself as an instructor, but I do give students uh, my number uh, so that they can text me because I'll respond to text messages a little faster than email messages. And you know, with leveraging technology, it seems that's what many people like, the text messages, uh, but, but that's just my preference. If a student makes the request, I do make myself available. So there you have it. If you want Omari's phone number, you just need to sign up for his class. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. And uh, and since and what I would like to add about the movement class, I would have each of you to know that uh, one of our most esteemed uh, instructors here at Kepler, Carol Tebbs, her years of experience as a professional astrologer what she shares in that class and what she teaches the students, many of those golden nuggets are not found in astrology books. That's right. And they are outright a result of her uh, 50 plus years of experience as a professional astrologer about um, movement, uh, chart movement. So if you're interested, certainly uh, feel free to uh, register for that that class if you are if you think you're ready for that class and um, you know we love to uh, have you and I know you would appreciate some of those golden nuggets of knowledge from from Carol Tebbs. For sure. Yeah, she's also an instructor in 102 this next term. Mm -hmm. Yeah she co-teaches with Enid and Omari. Will we be using Trello for the courses? We do not use Trello. Our, our, our learning platform is called Moodle. We use Trello in the background for some of our organizational things. So you might've seen in terms of our course planning that, that we do use Trello, but um, yeah, it's Moodle that we use as our learning platform. To clarify, if you test out of a class, then it would be less than 130 hours total for the diploma. 130 weeks, that was my mistake. Yes, that is correct. If you test out of some of the classes, then your journey will be much less. Oh, but they get credit for the class if they oh. if they pass the test. For sure. So they it's get listed, credit. it gets listed on their credentials mm -hmm. as something yeah. they passed. Absolutely. So they, they're not losing credits by taking the test. And no, passing. you're not. And your certificate will still say, or your diploma will still say that you had a, a, a education that had 130 weeks of education. And if you've passed the test, as, as Donna was mentioning earlier, we assume that you you didn't do it by having no knowledge <laughs> you yeah. know, that you had spent hours studying and learning to be able to, to do that. Exactly, yeah. Is there a deadline to complete the challenge test for W101 before it starts in January? Well, the class starts on January 2nd. The classroom opens on January 2nd. The first class is, I need my calendar in front of me. It's the 9th, is that right? The January, the January the 8th. 8th. The first live class will be January 8th. So if you were thinking of doing the test out before the class started, you, you'd probably want to have it completed by January 8th, but there's not an official deadline. So you do have time to do that. What you do want to make sure is that you have it done, I mean, up to you, but you, you would want to um, take advantage of the early bird deadline, which I believe is, it's two weeks before the class started. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Vanessa, if you remember, is it January 23rd? January 23rd is, is what? It's a Friday. It'd You're talking December. about December 23rd. Or sorry, December 23rd, yeah. Uh, yes, December 23rd is That's the Friday. Sort of deadline yeah. so now if you were thinking that you wanted to you know take advantage of that early bird deadline sign up for w101 uh, 
or, or challenge the 101 exam. You could sign up for W101 or W102. If you decided that you needed to switch, like if you wanted to start your journey, you could take advantage of the early deadline. If you pass the test, we could move you into W102 um, or sign up for W102 and we can back you back into 101. So don't, don't lose that early bird discount. Uh, we'll work something out. I'm interested in the challenge test. How long are they? How much time would one take? And does the free quiz resemble these tests? The free quiz actually does resemble these tests, not in the extent that you are having to do a complete delineation of a chart because that would be part of the challenge test. Uh, so by all means, take the quiz because it'll tell you the information that you need in order to challenge the exam. How long would they take? Again, that's going to depend on how, how, quickly, you, <laughs> how quickly you write. <clears throat> how long, I don't know, do any of you have any thoughts about how long those challenge tests might take? Well, I have seen some people take the quiz portion of the test and within a about a week take the you know complete the written portion but sometimes it's like a, a two month between someone who's taken the quiz and then taken the written portion so you're you can... gonna scare them yeah <laughs> but that's, a... you know i don't know why there was two months though so yeah. all i'm saying is what i've seen yeah and, and so i don't know if that was just because life intervened which life loves to do yeah, they've taken their time with it. And yeah. it's very similar to the test that we offer in 101. It is almost exactly the same. It's not, it's not the same chart, but it's you know similar questions that you have to answer, of course. And, and we give people from the time that we give them like 10 days to write their to write their uh, final exam. And so in terms of how many hours it takes, I mean, it would be the same question to say, how many hours does it take you to prepare for a chart reading? Some people will tell you that they spend, you know, 10 hours doing that and other people will spend half an hour. So that's really going to depend on your comfort level with doing the question. I don't, I don't know if there's a single answer to that question. I think we've scared them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, think most, really most of these tests, having looked at them, most of them are designed uh, so they can finish the, the multiple choice or fill in the blanks part rather quickly. The written part, the analysis part, I would say most people won't take you more than a couple hours to do it. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, you've yeah. gathered all the information in your quiz. And if your astrology is sound and you don't have to go back and look up a bunch of stuff, you can just write it out. We're not asking for a complete delineation. You know, in W101, for example, we're asking you to analyze certain components. You don't, it's not a full, what you would do in a one hour reading with someone. And right. if you're planning on, on continuing on any way, you're not losing the money that you're spending for no. the, to take the challenge. That's right. You're, yep. you're, it's going to apply and it can, are we still letting it apply also to the bridge course? Or the bridge workshop, rather? Um, the test that they take at the end of the bridge course is the 101 test. Yeah, so I thought we were letting it apply to oh, both. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah, so. tutoring available? We don't have a tutoring program, but we do have a number of graduates who, if you feel like you wanted to have some tutoring, you know, we can call on some of our graduates to help you out with that. Is it possible to audit a class? Now that word is a little bit loaded because for some people that means I'm taking the class free, which is what happens in some colleges and universities. Uh, but other colleges and universities do not have it for free. Um, when we say you can audit a class, we mean that you don't have to do the homework. You still have to pay for the class, it's not free, but you, but you can certainly attend and not be committed to the assignment. You just want to let us know that you're not going to do assignments so we don't stop you for them.
Um, I assume you have to be declared a certificate or a diploma student to be eligible for a scholarship. How many scholarships are awarded per session? Can you apply each session? And in theory, could you be awarded a scholarship more than once or ideally every semester? That's a great question. We have two kinds of scholarships at Kepler, and this should probably be part of the presentation now that I think about it. The one uh, scholarship that we have is our diversity scholarship, and that's like a full ride for a full year for whoever is awarded that scholarship. And you apply, uh, there's applications are taken and we at the beginning of the academic year, which is in September. So we would look at those in August and you can apply for those. Um, again, that, that gives you the whole year. The other scholarship that we have is the Maggie Nelbandian scholarship. And that is for people who are actually in our program. And you have to have already demonstrated a commitment to the program. So you know, we wouldn't give those to people in W101, but after that, you can apply for those scholarships and they are between $100 and $250. A lot of it depends on, because our scholarships are entirely dependent on donations. So it depends on how much donations we get in, how many scholarships we award per session. Those are evaluated every term and you can apply every term. And there, we have some people who have applied every term and. I don't know, Karen maybe knows the answer to this more, but you know, I think that many of our scholarship recipients have gone all the way through the diploma. Is that a correct statement? Yes, in terms of eligibility for an Albanian scholarship, you just have to have taken and successfully completed, i.e. gotten credit for a class, a class at Kepler, not a specific one. In terms of the number of students, over the last three years, we've averaged between eight and 10 students a term that have been given the scholarship. And yes, there have been some that have gotten it uh, for several several terms in a row. Um, but okay. if, if it's a continual problem, sometimes we've tried to find other ways to accommodate them, you know, like putting them to work on something, et cetera. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. So by all means, you know, apply for those scholarships. In the fundamentals classes, will we get practice reading charts and get feedback from teachers on our interpretation? You do. Uh, certainly in the W101, we, we have both um, in your assignments, you're going to be doing some a little bit of chart interpretation and you will get feedback on those assignments. Within the class, we do, uh, we do some work on chart interpretation. At the beginning, it's a little bit more lectury, but as we move in and there's a little bit more tools uh, that the students have gathered, then we do call on people in the class. Or I shouldn't say we call on, we encourage participation. And as you get farther into the, uh, into the curriculum, not in W1, but in the more advanced classes, then you probably will be called on. So I'm gonna say that it is actually an expectation that you will be practicing reading charts. And by all means, you get feedback from the teachers on your interpretation. This is a part of um, one of the things that we think is a strength for Kepler is that you're getting feedback. You're not necessarily going to get uh, you know, live somebody tearing down what you're saying, <laughs> but we're encouraging an active discussion for sure and interpretation and we try to keep you from going off the rails. You know, part, part of this too, I should mention is a lot of times everyone wants to leap into more advanced courses and, and do, do the work without having a real grounding and you keep keep us hearing us talk about 101 and what we cover in 101 and and 102 and, and focusing on that because what we did when we designed these courses was we looked at what's really truly absolutely basic and essential before you can actually pile on all this other stuff <laughs> and yeah, so exactly. that's yeah, some of the most important classes you'll ever take at Kepler would be the 101, 102, 103. 
Mm -hmm. The foundations, for and sure. The foundations, one time. Yeah, I would certainly agree. And um, once or twice, I have had an opportunity to work with a student who I think did not complete the 101, 102, 103, and 104 classes. And as the instructor, I was able, I observed and could tell that there were gaps, some significant gaps uh, in the student's knowledge. And as an instructor, I love when students ask questions, I welcome it, but is the question germane to the learning objectives of that particular course or are the questions germane to the learning objectives of a other course that the student did not take? Yeah, I think <laughs> so, that's- Yeah, so it goes back to what we offer you here at Kepler College that you know structured or tiered learning where you can carry the learning forward from one class to the next and uh, as Zena stated you get that you, you you get you get grounded and develop a solid foundation uh, as a student of astrology mm -hmm. and i have to say vanessa and i actually very recently had somebody who how far along in their diploma were they when they decided to take 101 vanessa she was almost three years in and she decided to come back and take 101 again. <laughs> yeah. And would you, would you share her experience? Uh, she was an excellent student and she, you know, was going through the program. She originally started at the bridge in the bridge workshop. She had, you know, been studying casually for years and years and went through, went through the predictions classes um, and just decided that you know, it would be valuable to go back and strip it all down and to really go back to the absolute basics, fill in all the holes. And to Omari's point, sometimes the holes aren't evident until you get into those later classes and you're like, ooh, why do I not know what's going on here? You know, I know most of this, but I'm not like landing it, why? And, um, this person, you know, came back, went through 101, and then went straight back into the end of the third year. <laughs> so. And she was so, um, I don't know what the right word is, but so wishing that she had done 101 to start with. She was like, okay, now I get it. And she'd gone through all these classes and just just was, taking, was passing the classes, but didn't really have it instilled in her until she went through the 10 week class in 101 and she was already doing really well in her classes. So you well, can't yeah. skip the foundation, right? Yeah, well, I've, I've had a couple of the people that TA'd for me in 101 when I was doing the full 101 course <laughs> commented that it was like, oh, you know, I know we went through all of this, <laughs> but now it really, truly makes sense. Yeah. And, and that's, I think in 102, probably the students get a little tired of Carol and I always saying, you know, everything you're going to be doing is going to get based on those skills you got in 101. Exactly. Yeah. And, and 101 is the fundamentals, but it is not an easy course. <laughs> And we get a lot of people who have been studying for years and years and years who, who come in just to see, you know, well, what is, what is Kepler all about? You know, I want to, I want to start at the beginning and, you know, you can test out if you feel like, yep, yeah, I got this, but um, many people stay through the whole thing and they just are blown away by how much deeper and stronger the, the bases are, you know, that they're building on when you go into like the movement classes or you know any other kind of specialty interpretation. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. we've had people with as many as 20 years of like practicing experience take 101. That it, it's not like Vanessa said, you know, there is homework there. And so <laughs> that's really you, the you course know. where where you can you can see you know, what what kind of level of expectation is going to be going all the way through but to get those foundations is really important and i, I don't think you're ever going to go wrong by taking that but, class yeah but but not to scare people <laughs> and think that oh i i'm a really beginner you know what am i going to be doing next to somebody with 20 years in some ways it's the beginners that have the easier time actually in many ways the beginners have the easier time when you've done 20 and, and i can attest to this because I didn't take a formal schooling until I had had at least 20 years experience 
being an astrologer and it I had sort of created these well this must fit like this and, and kind of maybe over here and, and only to discover that it was much simpler it was really really nice when you laid it out and you really go in to understand how the parts are put together yeah that's a really good point in it we, we have people that are really new to astrology right beside people that have been practicing for a really long time. And in our observation of the assignments, there is little difference in the, in the work that's coming through. And by the time, by the end, in the early weeks, perhaps, but by the end of 10 weeks, we have to really look, we have to go back to the introductions to see who was a beginner and who was an experienced astrologer. There's no difference in the quality of the work. So don't let that scare you. But yeah, you often are beside people who have a good consulting practice already, which leads to the next question. Is the certification a good start for starting a professional consultation practice? Yes, absolutely. This is where you want to begin to give you everything that you need. And as you get farther along, then you maybe want to dive into some of the professional development classes that will help you launch your business. Well, not just the certificate. I mean... The basic. Oh yeah, the whole diploma yeah, for sure. Yeah, the the fun, the basic fundamental certificate is all focused on just working with a natal chart. Yeah. You need to have. You really don't want to pra start a practice unless you really also have grounded all the movement. I think I meant. I meant. I said certificate. I meant diploma. Okay. So, so I'm the sorry. Diploma, I just, Certificate is a great <laughs> certificate is a great place to start, but the diploma yeah. itself will give you what you need to launch your practice. But it sure. gives you it gives you the confidence and to to because you talk about a lot of the issues that are going to be encountered. You're working with people who've been professional astrologers. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So and, here, oh, um, go ahead, Omari. Yes, and I would just like to add to that, that here at Kepler College, uh, in the professional diploma program, we do offer a class, Astropreneurship, which is astrology and entrepreneurship combined. Uh, it's uh, two five-week classes, and in the first five weeks, it's the fundamentals um, about business. What type of business structure uh, will you have in terms of an LLC, a sole proprietorship, we touch on, you know, budgeting, you know, revenue planning, touch on, you know, marketing to include social media. So there's some exposure there to the fundamentals about establishing uh, a business. And then for the uh, second five weeks of astropreneurship, we get into some of the good stuff like electional astrology. Uh, when should you establish um your bank account? When should you launch your website or relaunch your website? When should you sign uh, certain contracts uh, for your business? And then there's also a vocational opponent component to that as well, in which it a vocational astrology can be used to help you perhaps identify which segment of astrology you might be best suited for. So some astrologers are good with horary, or medical astrology or electional astrology and not some of the other branches. What, what Omari just talked about remind me of something else important about the instructors at Kepler, and that's that they come from a lot of different backgrounds. You could hear the business financial background that Omari has in what he was saying. Others have a background in psychology or social work, other kinds of businesses. So there's a, a great deal of experience besides the astrological practices of the astrologers that are, are teaching you here at Kepler. Exactly. I also wanted to mention about the question about reading charts. For example, in 103, we invite the students to put in one to two charts that they want us to work on during the term. They can include their own chart if they want, that's totally optional, but they are actually putting in charts for us to work on. So we not only work on charts, but we work on charts that they want to see. Great. Uh, will you have an advisor you can go to to ensure you're taking the right classes towards whatever certificate or diploma program you're pursuing? So we don't assign you specifically, here's the person that you're going to work with, but at any time, 
you certainly can approach me as the president of the college and our director of education who wasn't able to join us today, Alex Trenowa, will help guide you on that path. And our registrar can also help you. But any of the people that you see in the room here today can also help you if you have any questions. So uh, again, we, we're not assigning you a specific person, but there's lots of help available. After payment, how soon will you be able to gain access to the materials needed for the course? As soon as you register, you are put into the Moodle classroom. There's some of the new classes, I think right now that uh, you're kind of in a holding area um, for, the, for the time being, but the, certainly the fundamentals classes, the regular classes that we've been offering in the diploma, all of these classes, uh, you're put in the classroom right away. You can't see all of the weeks right away because we open those up one by one by one. And that's really to keep people on, on track with the learning that is going on in that week. But you are available. You, you have access to all of the resources. Okay. Are the fundamental courses presented on Zoom, much like today's session, or are they more interactive with both camera and audio participation? Now, this particular session is a Zoom webinar, and so we do not have audio and visual, but, but our uh, regular classes are just a regular Zoom meeting, so it's still Zoom, but just a different format, and you will have com camera and audio, and we encourage that kind of active contribution and participation in the class. We don't make you, but we hope that you do. <laughs> Uh, I'm slightly fuzzy on testing out. Can you break down the quiz, the challenge test, and the four classes they correspond to, and the bridge class? Okay. So the quiz, let me go there. The quiz is probably the first place that you want to start. This is just a free quiz that's going to help you to decide where you're at in your learning. And you know, we don't, we're not doing anything with that information, except, you know, if you take the quiz and then you want to ask us where, if, if you think that, uh, if we think that you have what you need to take 101 or 102 or any of the classes, we can go into that quiz and check and see um, if, if you made, if you didn't get 100%, which questions, because some of them are kind of more important than others. <laughs> So we can certainly do a, a, a live evaluation of that outside of the, res the automatic response that you get. From the quiz. Then if you feel like you have, if you, there's different levels to the quiz. So if you did really well, it, it'll actually tell you, okay, if you've got this amount of knowledge, you can probably challenge the 101 um, course. And then you can just let us know if you want to want to can go to the store and purchase that challenge exam. Or it might tell you that, well, you're halfway there. And if you're halfway there, maybe you want to take the bridge course. And that's the one that Ian was talking about. So that's the one where I've, I've got a lot of the information, but I just want to fill in some gaps. Which And the bridge one isn't actually a, a course in the same way that some of these others are. It's a workshop. So it doesn't have the same kind of rigor with assignments, but it'll help you to fill in some of the gaps. And then at the end of that bridge course, you can still challenge the exam and go into the next level of 102. And then um, here are the other challenge exams. So then the next level in the fundamental certificate, uh, the fundamental certificate is comprised of W101, W102, W103, that's like a fundamental certificate. And then you also need W104 if you're going to be going on to the diploma or you want the advanced fundamental certificate. So you can test out of the first two levels of fundamentals, W101 and W102. W110 is the first class in the uh, predictive certificate and a required course in the diploma. Test out of that one as well. And chart calculation is not part of a certificate, but is a requirement in the diploma. And that's another one that you can test out of. Let me know if I have not answered that question completely. I hope that I have. 
Is it possible to take 101 and bridge at the same time? It is possible, but I don't think necessary because uh, 101 would give you everything that's included in the bridge. Um, but you certainly could, we wouldn't stop you, but it would, it would probably not be uh, well, you'd, you'd certainly get a lot of practice. <laughs> you would get a lot of practice, absolutely. <laughs> And I think that is, a re if I have missed your question, please type it again, because I've been scrolling down in the Q&A, and I think I got everything, but if I did not, please send, submit your question again. And if there are no other questions, uh, thank you so much for coming out today. We really appreciated all of your really good questions that, that inspired me to do something different for the next presentation that we give on this. And we really hope to see many of you in our classes this winter. I'm not seeing any others. So with that, I will stop the recording and wish you all a great week. Thank you so much.